Hi guys, how are you doing? It's Elster Nation here. So, we're going to go through another tutorial. So, this is painting the Predator for the AVP game, The Hunt Begins from Prodos Games. So, as you can see here, I have started uh, base coat in the model black, and then with a spray down, uh, sort of a 45 degree angle, uh, primed it with grey again, just to like allow me to see what's going on. Um, so what we're using here is basically a Forge World clear green colour, I believe it's Mortarian green. Now, you don't necessarily have to use this colour, just a thin down green will suffice. So what we're doing now is coming in again, but with a yellow. So this is Sigismund yellow, um, so this is the yellow clear colour from Forge World. Again, you don't need to use this one, a very thin down yellow will suffice as well. You basically just don't want this to be very blocky, you just want to coat this on and this is going to be the main part of this whole tutorial is very thin layers so again you see here just another layer of that yellow um, for every, anyone who saw the aliens tutorial this is a lot different this is a lot more time consuming but I do think the end product is a lot nicer okay so now we're coming in with some Vallejo middle middle stone um, Again, thin down, so it may not look like a lot is going on, but more thin layers are better than one thick layer, otherwise you start losing detail. And that's going to be the main focus throughout this entire tutorial. Okay, and just touching up the details here as well on the hands and legs, etc. Okay, so now another layer, and I've added in a little bit of a mix of um, Vallejo's Desert Yellow to the Middle Stone, because the Middle Stone was kind of greenish, and I wanted to get more yellowy um, and closer to a skin replication, which is what I'm aiming for. So again, another thin layer over the top, but as you can see, you're starting to change the colour, but you're also getting that bottom layer colours come through as well. Which is the whole kind of point, because Predators have got green blood, so basically it should be green underneath and then all the layers are on top. So what you'll see me do here is I switch from middle stone to desert yellow. And then from desert yellow, I start adding in Vallejo's uh, pale flesh into the mix. So we'll basically start with middle stone, then a mix of middle stone and desert yellow, then desert yellow, then desert yellow and a pale flesh mix, and all the way up to a pale flesh. Now, as you'll see here, this will go on in many, 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 many coats. So um, do it as you see fit. Now, there's no real exact rule here, but I mean, you can see here now I've put a bit of that pale flesh in the mix, so it's going a little bit lighter now. So, you choose when you want to start adding more. If you want to do more layers, that's fine. If you want to do less layers, that's fine. I would suggest more um, than thin down, because you'll get a lot more detail out of it, you get a lot more effect. But if you want to do cheat, well, I say cheat, but you can kind of skip ahead a little bit by not making them as thin. Okay, now here's just a quick wash of Agrax Earthshade just to give a bit of a brown 
colour into the mix. Um, it was turning out a bit green, so I wanted to kind of diffuse that a little bit. So again, back in with a mix of palette flesh and desert yellow. I do have to apologise if you see my hand get in the way of the painting. I, do, I am sorry, it's just this was a very long process and every now and again I did need to get my hand in the way, so... Yeah, another layer again. And another layer. Now I kind of muck up here, I painted all the back of his head and then I realised that bit is actually black, so you'll see me go over and paint that bit over again later on. It's worthwhile mentioning as well, always use reference pictures as well. Um, when I was painting this one I just had pictures of all the predators up, and there's actually different colours of predators. So um, don't think this is the only way to do it, you can do it other ways. So as you can see here, it's really starting to get lighter now. Um, so we're going in with more of the pale flesh, and this is just kind of diluted down to very thin, so we're just kind of getting a glaze on it. So yet another layer that we're putting on, and this time it's pretty much just pale flesh. It's worthwhile mentioning as well, if you're not sure on this, as you get light, uh, the surface area you cover in paint actually gets smaller as well, so you're only kind of aiming for the very sort of top highlight parts on this. Okay, so this bit is the interesting part. So I start off um, by mixing a, a brown, grey and black mix, using quite a lot of black in it. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm stabbing down little dots. Now, um, use reference pictures here, I can't stress this enough at this point. Get reference pictures because it will tell you where the patterns of spots are. They're not all over the place, they're actually quite specific patterns. Have a look at them. Um, and it will give you a bit of a guidance of where to put the spots. Now all you need to do is get a fine detail brush, um, make sure you haven't got a lot of paint on it, and just lightly 
dab it down. Okay, you're kind of like trying to spike it on and try not to make the spots too big. You want to sort of go for minimalistic spots here. So um, just give it a practice run on something. Um, but you'll find out if you just very lightly tap your brush over it, you'll get those spots. Now what I'm doing here is I actually realise the back part of the head is actually kind of black, so I'm just filling that bit in black. So the part which sort of connect to the dreadlocks are this blackish colour, so I've just filled it in. Zod's Law is I painted it, I put a little bit of effort into painting all the skin tones there, but yeah. You live and you learn. So with this bit as well, I'm also um, I'm doing the spots all around the rest of the torso as well. I mainly focused on the head, but yeah, there are spots all over. As you can see on the back there, they're all over there. Um, have a, again, have a look at reference pictures because they're not completely all over. They are in kind of patterns and clusters. So have a look, and there are actually different ones. So pick the one you like and just make the spots in the cluster pattern that you think is good. Okay, so now I'm coming in with another colour. This is actually a brown. Um, and again, I'm doing the same technique, just adding some tiny little spots here and there. Um, this actually helps break it, break up the colour a little bit. I, I know it sounds weird, but um, yeah, you kind of add more depth to it by adding more colours to it. So um, what I did was a, a really blackish grey, a brown, a quite a dark brown that is, and a lighter grey. And I just dabbed them over the place, so maybe where there was tiny little gaps, I tried to add a little bit of different colours there. Um, but yeah, don't don't go overboard with it. If you add spots too much all over the place, it starts to become a bit problematic and a bit too crowded. Okay, so this next bit, we're going to start moving on to the armor. Now, I've used a mix of Scale 75 Anthracite Grey, uh, mixed with black, basically, as the base coat. So, um, I started off using it very watered down, because the pre-shading should hopefully sort of work. Um, you'll find out later on that I kind of give up on this, and kind of went, nah, and I thicken it up a bit, um, and I add a bit more color to it. But, if you want to, Use the pre-shading because it gives you quite a nice reference of where light's going to hit um, and how you can shade it, but it's not necessarily a rule. You can change it if you want to just paint it over again and shade it how you wish.
So now as you can see here, I've come back in with it with a much stronger tone, um, just to sort of darken it all up. And I decided to go from very dark and just highlight up the old fashioned way. I also use this opportunity to uh, get a bit of the dreadlocks painted up and make them a bit darker as well. So at this point I'm starting the highlighting process and again I'm using this very thin down colour as a glaze sort of effect. This is just anthracite grey on its own, very thin down though as well. And as you can see I'm just putting very thin layers on it and building up the colour very slowly. I mean you can cheat and you can go a little bit faster with this if you wish. Um, and just basically paint on a bit thicker. I personally don't like that because you get a better effect if it's thinner and you can kind of manage it a bit more. However, it's your model at the end of the day, so have fun with it. If you want to get it done quicker, get it done quicker. So again, another layer of highlight, and this time we're mixing in with some graphite grey. Uh, sorry, it's just called graphite from scale 75, in with the anthracite grey. If I'm pronouncing it wrong, I do apologise, it's just the way I pronounce it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, if it's pronounced differently, actually put it in the comments below, it'd be nice to know how I'm supposed to say it. Um, but yeah, I've tried it a little bit thicker at this point. Um, I didn't really like it though. So I go back in with a uh, but a sort of more of a glaze to kind of blend it out a bit more. Um, it's thick is quicker, but I don't like the end result. So I ended up going back to just doing lots and lots of sort of glaze layers, basically. And again, another layer, just to bring it up a bit. And I decided to put a little bit of highlights on the dreadlocks as well. And again, another layer. So this takes a very long time, guys, but the end result is awesome. So again, another layer, and we're going over all the pieces of armor and the spear as well on this. Um, and if if it hasn't been clear, basically, you just want to go for the highlighted areas where light's going to hit it. Um, with all these highlights, just build it up there. And as you go up in layers, the surface area, again, gets smaller and smaller and lighter and lighter at the same time. And again, another layer. Just keep working at it until you feel it's right and what you're happy with at the end of the day. What you'll also see in this process is it's starting to get lighter. All I'm doing is mixing some white in with it. Um, a very small amount. And we're just getting lighter and lighter each time we do it, and again with this glaze effect.
Okay, so now this bit is I'm marking out all the little sort of sections of the dreadlocks, which should be yellow, and just painting them a uh, white colour. So you could use ivory, you could use a light grey, it doesn't really matter too much. And as you can see here, all I'm doing afterwards is just going over the top of it with a yellow. Now I'm using desert yellow again, I didn't want too vibrant a yellow, so I'm just using this one as is a little bit more dulled down, gives more of it, kind of ties in nicer with the realistic look we're going for. Okay, now this bit is the tricky bit. Um, how to get all the fishnet part of it done. So I started off maybe with an experiment of watered down Agrax Earth Shade. And I thought, yeah, this might work and hopefully it'll pull and um, yeah, highlight it. Really didn't work. Did give a little bit of a nice effect. So I resorted to the old fashioned method of trying to paint it on with a very fine detail brush. Now, I use this like I do when I do pencil drawings. I don't try and make the mark. I just brush over it very lightly until the mark actually starts showing up. So, um, don't try and put a solid line down because it ends up causing problems and you end up spilling over and stuff like that. You just slightly flick it a bit like um, sorry, hard edge highlighting. And, um, yeah, just wait till they show up and just do it very very carefully Now this bit as well, I'm starting to paint on the sort of claws and the fingernails and all I'm using is a dark brown for that. Um, you can use charred brown, um, you can use rhinoxide from GW, whatever you fancy really. I'm also using the same colour for the straps and the cloth, well it basically is a loincloth really. Um, the belts and also cover up some of the skulls. I go over that later, I just kind of wanted to do it to block it in really. Um, but yeah. Just you find a dark brown, one you're happy with, and use that as the base colour for the straps and other parts. I also use the same colour for his little claws on his mandible things that he's got going on. Now this bit, all I'm doing is using a uh, gore red, uh, thinning it down and just paint it as a glaze inside the mouth. Okay, so this bit, I'm just painting the skulls and the bone parts um, an ivory colour. So, uh, take your pick, bleach bone, whatever the colours are out these days. Um, I can't remember what it is from Vallejo as well. But yeah, but just paint them an ivory colour all over. While I had the ivory colour out, I decided to mix it with some of the brown and just highlight up the loincloth and the straps on it just to give that a little bit more depth. Okay, so now this little bit I'm a bit rubbish at, So, but what happens is the inside of the eye sockets are actually very dark, so I've actually just painted them black. I do the eyes later by painting a little bit of white and then a little bit of yellow and then trying to do a pupil. I don't do that on camera because I'm absolutely rubbish at it and I need to get under magnifying glass. But moving back onto the bone side of things, all I'm doing is applying a wash of Agrax Earth Shade over that, and as you can see, I'm also washing the straps as well, just to blend that highlight that I did earlier. 
Also, you can see here, I did something because the fishnets were standing out a bit strange. So I've done a, a wash over each line. Okay, and now all I'm doing is going in with the highlight of the ivory colour again and just touching up and bringing all the highlights out. Sorry, all the highlights out on the skulls and all the bone parts of it as well. Okay, and this next bit, I admit I got a little bit lazy here, but basically I wanted to get a kind of chalky colour on the bone, so I decided to do a dry brush over it. What I found out I liked, though, is when I had the dry brush out, I actually decided to dry brush some of the uh, metal parts. And basically, instead of having to do hard edge highlighting, uh, I did a dry brush over it. And it's a very, very fine dry brush as well, so all we're doing is picking out the edges and just making it a little bit crisper, a little bit sharper on the metal side of things. Also, if I haven't mentioned as well, the colour I'm doing a dry brush with is basically white. Okay, now this bit's a bit strange, I haven't really done this before, but this is very thin down gun metal, and this is used as a glaze over the armour, so I wanted to give it a slight metallic edge to it, so this glaze just brings out a very, very small amount of shine. And here's the finished product, so... That's basically how I did it. I hope you guys liked the tutorial. Um, I'm sorry that it wasn't fully comprehensive in as I didn't show you absolutely everything, um, but it did take me close to three days to actually film it and paint it and everything. Um, if you do have any questions though in regards to it, please just drop them in the comments below or check out the Facebook page and send me a message on there. I'm happy to answer any questions. I've also decided to throw in um, some spinny round shots of the other predator I did earlier in true Blue Peter fashion. So, hope you guys liked it. Uh, let me know what you think. If you don't like it, if you could let me know why, that'd be great. And if you've got any other tips or uh, bits of advice, that'd be really appreciated. So take it steady guys, hope you all enjoyed it and I'll see you next time, bye bye.